Hello everybody, this is Chris back with the Ancient Scholar. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up our discussion on uh, the the flow time scalar. I got cut off a little short there. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little limited uh, in, in the amount of time. I can only film for about 10 minutes because uh, I actually do a lot of filming with my iPad. And um, actually YouTube lets me do longer videos in 10 minutes, but my iPad uh, doesn't like to publish videos that are that are any longer than about 10 minutes. So I, and honestly, I think people probably get bored of listening to me talk after 10 minutes, if, if not well before that. Uh, so I don't, I don't think that uh, a, a, an excessively long video is of, of a whole lot of value. I think the longest video I've done is somewhere around 20 minutes. So uh, we'll try to keep these short, high yield, and, 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 and hopefully to the point, even though I do have a tendency to be a little, little long-winded at times. So let's just go ahead and uh, finish up the, the, the high yield, some of the high yield information that we can identify with the flow uh, time scalar. And probably the most important thing that we can identify is auto peep. And um, you guys should know what auto peep is at this point in time, what it does and how we treat it. So when we are talking about the flow time scalar, uh, when I drew it, you guys probably remembered that the expiratory phase would come back to the baseline come back to zero flow. This is what that represents. Uh, my patient is able to exhale fully and I no longer have flow. And then I go into my next, um, in, into the inspiratory phase and then I exhale and I'm allowed to exhale fully to where there's no flow or virtually no flow and then I go into in inspiration again. Now in auto peep, we know that that's a result of things like breath stacking or not having enough time to exhale, and that'll have a very unique manifestation on the flow time scalar. And this is a very classic uh, finding for auto peep. And it is gonna look something like this, where I am going to be in my expiratory phase, and then my next breath will be delivered in the expiratory phase itself. So let's just go ahead and draw another one here, just like this. Now you can see that this line here should have, we should have allowed that line, and I'll just draw some dots, to return to zero, return to the baseline. However, inspiration begins way down here. And what that represents is inspiration is beginning before I have time to exhale fully. So what I'm doing is I'm stacking. Um, that patient was not able to exhale fully, and I'm already delivering another breath while they're trying to exhale that stacks a breath, breath on top of that, breath on top of that, and this becomes a, a vicious cycle of um, auto peep. Auto peep. That is a very classic finding for auto peep on the flow time scalar. Um, some other, so that's really, that's a big, uh, the big one that we look for on the flow time scale. There's some other uh, information, of course, you can tell if somebody's taking spontaneous breaths. Uh, so I'll go ahead and draw this, and let's say that we have our patient in uh, assist control ventilation. And so here I've got a breath. something that looks like this. So this would be an example of a, somebody in SIMV mode. Because I have a mandatory breath here, everyone would agree, and a mandatory breath here. So mandatory, mandatory, and of course we can tell that this is a volume control uh, mode, or the, the mode obviously is SIMV, but the type of ventilation, the, the, um, the cycling mechanism is volume controlled. And then in between these two mandatory breaths, I have my sine, or what will look like, looks like a sine wave, and of course these are spontaneous breaths. So we can identify when somebody is taking spontaneous breaths on our flow time scaler, and we can also help, yeah, also helps us identify the mode, and obviously uh, we should know the mode when we do our ventilator check by checking the ventilator, but every so often on the exams they'll, they'll give you questions like that and you'll have to identify the mode um, and what's going on based solely on the graphic. Um, some other things, uh, some other information you can gather 
let's say that I have somebody with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease um, or asthma and they're, they're having bronchospasm. Well, what you might find is something like this. Everybody can see that what I have is I have a normal eye time here or uh, flow during the inspiratory time. And then you can see during exhalation, my flow is very short. That interval is a short interval. So I don't have, a, I don't have, it's very short. I don't have very good flow. And this may indicate bronchospasm. This may indicate bronchospasm. And so what you might see is after you treat your patient, let's say we give them a bronchodilator, um, you're going to see something like this. And you can see that my flow, my expiratory flow here has increased. So my peak flow, my peak expiratory flow rate has increased. I'm getting good flow. And um, obviously the, the time is a little, a little different. Um, but I'm able to get more flow out. It's more efficient and more effective. So you may see something like this. If you treat a patient with bronchospasm or bronchodilator, you'll see their peak expiratory flow rates increase. And that would actually be a good finding. You'd want to see that you'd want to see them be more efficient at exhaling. So those are the major things that we look at with a flow time scaler. Uh, auto peep, uh, identification of auto peep probably being the primary thing that we're going to be worried about at this point. Um, okay guys, I'm going to go ahead and cut it off here and uh, I think we're good to go on the high yield basic information that we can gather from the flow time scaler. Um, I'll be talking about uh, some, a couple of the other scalers, and then uh, we'll go on to the loops in subsequent videos. Take care. Bye-bye.